Good morning, brothers and sisters. We welcome you to Lake Town, to the Lake Town Chapel. We are here gathered to pay our respects to Lorene Webb, who has passed and to mourn with her family. We're very grateful for all of the efforts and donations and help from everybody who's shown up. I am Bishop David Fairborn. I will, I will be conducting this funeral proceeding. I direct your attention to their program. We will proceed as follows. A family prayer was offered by Brother Charles Webb, by her, uh, Lorene's son. Our organist is Kathy Johnson, who is a family friend. We will begin by having an opening prayer. Ralph Spotton, who is also a family friend, after which a musical number will be uh, uh, performed by Crystal Webb, granddaughter-in-law. The number is the Sweetheart Tree. A life sketch will be given by Corey Meyerhofer, a grandson. We will have a speaker, Brother Cameron Buddha Argyle, who's a grandson-in-law. We will then be favored with another musical number by Carrie, Ty, Jarek, and Kaysen, and granddaughter-in-law and family. The number will be in the garden, after which we will have a speaker, Ken Erhofer, a son-in-law. Then I will offer some concluding remarks, and we will close with a musical number by Sister Emma Carver, You'll Never Walk Alone, accompanied by Sister Kathy Johnson. And the closing prayer will be given by Brother Brian Nelson, a grandson-in-law. Our Heavenly Father, <clears throat> we, as we come together to, to show respect and celebrate the life of Sister Noreen Webb, we ask that Thy Spirit would be here to comfort family and to uh, know of love and support they have from the community and those around them. We uh, pray for Thy <clears throat> Spirit to, to be with those that participate this day, that they might be able to do their part in the way that they're pleasing to Thee and the Heavenly Father. We're grateful for the Gospel of Jesus Christ and its influence in our lives that helps us to know that families can be together forever someday. Well, again, we're grateful for this beautiful building we have to circumstance, we have to meet in and, and to <clears throat> be warm and comfortable. We're so grateful for Sister Irene and the mother and grandmother and great-grandmother and a friend to all that, that knew her. We ask our spirit to continue to be with us this day and he say pray for in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
Mary Lorene Webb passed away peacefully at her home in the early morning of October 23rd, 2023, at the age of 94. Lorene, as she was called, was born in Lake Town, Utah on March 16, 1929. Mom grew up with a love of horses. She always wanted to ride horses, whether it was hers, her own or someone else's. She had a beautiful soprano voice, which she shared by singing at many funerals, ward, and community activities. She married Del Delford Leslie Webb on December 29, 1948, in the Logan LDS Temple. He passed away on, on February 24, 2009. Before his passing, wherever Dad was, Mom was there also. Whether it was working or playing, one of my greatest memories was when I was up there one time and Grandpa was hauling cattle over the Montpelier stockyards and he had an old brown stock truck and I remember me and Grandma jumping in and riding with him. I sat up on the little engine compartment in the truck and she was in the passenger seat and Grandpa driving. And they were always together. Uh, they raised their family in Lake Town, Utah. Lorraine worked in many places in the area. She retired as a bus driver for Rich County Schools. Even after retirement, she worked for the city parks. She was also a wonderful homemaker. My mother loved her music. Her and dad would sing together with family and, and also any ward functions. She also played the organ at home. Mom was an active member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. She served in many ward positions, but her favorite was ward chorister. Mom and dad also worked in the Logan Temple together. Mom also loved her flowers. She worked very hard to keep her flowers beautiful. People would stop and take pictures of them. Mom sat on her back porch for many hours, loving the visits with her friends and family. After dad passed, mom missed him terribly. We know she is happy again. Lorena survived by her loving family. Brother Ronald Eller, four children, Marcia Kampmeyer Hoffer, Chuck Randy Webb, Rose Steve Thompson, Lois Bill Shoup, 12 grandchildren, 32 great-grandchildren, two of which are serving LDS missions in South Africa and the Philippines, and one great-great-grandchild. She is preceded in death by her husband, two sisters, two brothers, her parents, daughter-in-law, and one great-grandchild. And I know it's a great reunion when Grandma and Grandpa got back together in heaven so they could be side-by-side side forever, so Grandpa can sit in his chair and Grandma can throw the remote at him and say, Wake up, Delford! <laughs> Boy, it's hot up here. Um, they say impersonation is the ultimate respect you can give to someone. So I'm starting to take on Grandma's hair color just to pay a little respect. Um, Grandma le left a very good example for us to look forward, or look up to and follow. With her wonderful insight, a few weeks before I met my wife, she told her that she needed to stay single, finish school, and get a good job before she got interested in boys. Then after meeting me, she told my wife, cross your fingers, he's the one. So it's plain to see that Grandma knew before anyone else, including me, where I was coming. Grandma was also always so welcoming to everyone. There are countless times I can remember being at her house with everyone sitting on the porch just visiting. And when there were too many of us, we'd move underneath the crab apple tree so that everyone could be in one big conversation and all the great grandchildren playing with the wiggle bikes up and down the sidewalk. Even the young girls that lived next door would come over and see Grandma because their grandparents lived far away. It seemed that we all loved to go see Grandma. And let's see, at times in the winter, there were so many of us in her house that every seat would be taken. People would be laying on the floor just to spend time together. She showed us how to love and stay close to our family by her example and warming heart, welcoming heart. I've heard stories from the kids and grandkids that Grandma was not afraid to get after them but she was never anything but kind to me, so now I want to know how bad some of you must have really been. Or maybe she just got softer, she got wiser. I can say from day one, I always felt like I was part of the family and never an outsider. I will always remember the kind ex example Grandma was. It never failed. If you did something for her, she was always there to say thank you every single time. 
and every time you left her house, it was always, come back soon, or it was great to see you. That always made you feel at home and welcome. She always appreciated the help, but she wasn't going to wait for it. Last winter, I went to plow her driveway, and she was already out shoveling the snow to get to her car out. There was no slowing her down. She always knew that everyone was up to what everyone was up to and how they were doing, so she could tell you the good things that were happening within the family, or if someone was having a rough patch and might need a little prayer. I loved how the whole family would get together without planning it, just planning just to hang out. Usually, all it took was Grandma saying that one of the family was coming up and the others would just show up to visit with one another. She showed us how to have a good marriage by truly caring for her partner. So I am comforted to know that she is with her husband once again. I can't imagine the joy she must feel to see him again. As I know we are sad to see her leave us, I think Grandpa is probably happy to have her back in his arms.
Good morning, brothers and sisters, family, friends, neighbors of Lorraine Webb. I was originally asked to say the family prayer, and I thought, oh, that's good. And then, uh, unbeknownst to me, the next day I got a call from my wife and asked if I'd talk, and I said, whatever. So here I am. So yesterday I, uh, I sent out a, a text to all the family to ask for some stories. So some of these stories are stories from the kids and the grandkids, and hopefully I can do them justice. Had one kind of a humorous thing today that happened that the bishop did. Steve brought a little box with their rings in and set them on top of Lorraine, and the bishop come over and says, oh, are those the keys to the Prius? And uh, everybody kind of got a laugh about that and says, no, that they were his rings, because she was well known for her white Prius driving around town. And, uh, and this was here just uh, last month or two ago. And so, anyway, uh, hmm. Uh, Lorraine, the first time I met her, uh, I met Marcia on uh, June 9th of uh, 1972. It was probably a week and a half later than that, I came up with her for the weekend. And uh, on our way down the canyon, we pulled into pulleys. And uh, <clears throat> Lorraine was a waitress there. And not always heard like mother, like daughter. And I, I wrote here that when I first met her, she was a very pretty lady. Well, that's what I would say now. But when I was there, I thought she's cute. Uh, when I was 22 years old, and uh, she was a very pretty lady. So about three weeks later, I proposed to Marcia. Because <laughs> she was very pure, pretty and cute. It still is. You know, I think that is true, like mother, like daughter. Lorene had a, a quick, wit, quick wit and a little bit of a temper. Um, I got a, a call from one of the kids, and as he was talking to me, now you know who it was, Marcia says, I remember that. But back in the early days, Lorena Delfer drank coffee. And uh, the coffee pot was on the stove, and I don't know what Delfer did. <laughs> Maybe Marcia and Chuck know, but he said or did something. He grabbed the coffee pot and he slung it at him, you know, there's remotes, through the coffee pot. Yeah, my, oh, mother, thank you. Lorene threw the coffee pot off the stove at Delford. Well, Delford got out of the way, and poor old wall had a hole in it for, I don't know how long the hole was there. Chuck, do you remember? <laughs> Shaped just like to handle the coffee pot, so. You know, she likes throwing, she used to like throwing things at Port Elford. So, uh, it says in the Bible, you spare the rod, you spoil the child. You know, uh, Lorraine didn't believe in the rod, but I'm going to get the kids cringing here. I don't know if they recognize this. But, uh, they used to have a nice little willow tree out in the back of their house, and she could... Well, I think a lot of times they sent the kids out there to pick their own willow. And she'd peel that old uh, branches off of that and the leaves. And she was ready. One of the daughters called me and says, well, I used to tell my mom I could outrun her. Well, she soon learned out that Lorraine was faster than she wanted. Another one of the daughters said she didn't get you in the butt, you know, because you always have padding on the butt. She'd go for your lower legs and ankles, you know. 
So her kids were spoiled because she didn't use a rod, but she did use a willow. And I think there was a few of the grandkids that even mentioned it to me that uh, they even got to pick their willow. And uh, so you young grandkids, you know, they say it's child abuse nowadays, but you know, if it is, all the kids turned out pretty darn good with a little bit of discipline. So I think it's uh, loving your family. And uh, Delphi Marine loved their family. Another mentioned Lorene was an excellent homemaker and cook. It never mattered when they had come home from school. She was usually either ironing, cleaning the house, but she usually always had some icebox cookies for them to eat. And that was what she did when they'd get home for dinner or for, from school. And then she'd all, they would always sit down as a family for dinner. And you know, nowadays, I don't think that happens a whole lot. You know, we're all in such a hurry. Hopefully not in this room, we all have a chance to sit down with our family. But she always had a nice meal for them. Another kind of funny story, you know. I know Lorene loved me. She mentioned it a few times, that there were several times that she told Marcia she ought to divorce me. One uh, Christmas, her, Lorene and I, I know I'll talk about her shopping in a minute, but we went shopping and Marcia was with us and uh, got rid of Marcia somehow and her and I went back and we'd, Marcia had picked out a diamond ring that she wanted. And I bought the diamond ring for her. This is all probably four or five years after we were married to give her and first thing Christmas morning. You know, Lorene liked her, her kids to have good Christmases. She called up and says, Marcia, how was your Christmas? Marcia says, well, I got this and this and this. And she says, that you got? And uh, she says, let me talk to Kent. <laughs> so I talked, she talked to me and I told her a little bit of a lie. I says, well, Lorene, I, I figured I couldn't afford it, so I took uh, the diamond back and got my money back. And she yelled at me, and she told Marcia, she said, you need to divorce that guy. And, uh, and I didn't, Marcia wasn't in the room, but that afternoon, we always drove up either Christmas Eve or Christmas morning, but I took the diamond up and put it up in the, their tree in the house, and a few minutes after I was there for a while, and Lorraine was a little upset at me for that. And, I says, Marcia, what's in the tree? And so Marcia was able to get her diamond ring. And so she was happy. Now my family, we live a couple hours away. And we did a lot of camping together, especially the deer hunting time and that. We ran on Meyerhofer time. Uh, we'd get there sometime between 8, 9, 12, 1 o'clock. Never failed what time we got there. Delfer to be out there to help me park uh, the trailer or pitch the tent, whichever it was, but Lorene would always have a hmm, nice hot pot of homemade soup and cinnamon rolls ready for us to eat. It never failed. We, they took care of us and they'd wait for us. And Lois, you know, I'm hoping, uh, I'm just telling some short story. Lorene, had Lois cut her hair for many years, but she used to always get mad at her if she cut her hair too short because she said, it made my ears look bigger than they are. So as you know, Delford and Lorene both drove buses and uh, they'd be on a bus trip and a lot of times Lorene would go with them. And, uh, the kids would be back, you know, being kids on the bus and stuff like that. And Delford would get a little bit tired. So no stopping, no slowing down. All of a sudden, the kids seen Delford walking down the aisle in the bus. And, you know, I think it shocked them probably the first time or two. But Delford and Lorene had an act to where they could switch drive on that bus. The bus wouldn't slow down, wouldn't run off the road. And Delford would get up and 
we'll take a little bit of a break. So they worked good together. They had a good time. Uh, Loreen had great taste in shopping and clothes. You know, if you went, ever went shopping with her, as soon as she hit the store, if you weren't fast, she was off. She'd be shopping. Uh, Delford would find a nice bench and he would, he would sit and relax. And many times he'd have one of his grandsons or son-in-laws or somebody I remember many times, but once she got into a store, there was no stopping her. But she always bought clothes for our children and I know less that he used to get real nice shirts. She had great taste for shirts and clothes for the kids. But she did love her Christmas and her shopping and she had a good time shopping. Lorena always liked to walk. I don't know how many of you seen her walking around. I know when we'd come up, her and Marsh would take off walking around town. But as she was a, a child, they lived up Mill, Old Mill Canyon. And uh, she'd have to walk to school every day and walk home every day. And uh, there were sometimes she'd even walk home for lunch. And she figured that's where she got her love for walking was because that's she walked to school and when she was in school, I don't think she had buses. Don't think she even had cars. So it was either walking or horse and buggy back then. She's got, seen a lot of things in her days. So that's where her love for walking came. Her brother, Ronnie, who's still alive, that's her baby brother, he used to fly planes and he'd fly over Lake Town. And uh, every time he'd come and buzz the house, Lorena would recognize it, and she would run out and, and wave at him. And uh, one time, there used to be a, a path between the Satter's Waits and the Webs. And they, it was a path that they'd use quite regularly. It's pretty well gone now, but one time Ronnie came flying over. Here comes Lorene running out to wave at her. Belly was way out in front of her. Lois was inside. So I guess she had a pretty big belly with you, Lois, because he even noticed it from the plane. On one of the highlights of, I think, any of the family's visit with Lorraine and Delford and the children was when Delford would get out his guitar, and her and Lorraine would sit around and sing songs. They both had beautiful voices. They loved to share them, especially with their family. Delford had st strummed the old guitar. In fact, it wasn't long before he passed away, I know his hands were crippled up, but he got it out and they sang. And that was a real treat, one of the highlights. When my wife would give her mother a call on the phone, because we didn't visit that often. But when she'd call her on the phone, Lorraine was always thanked her for calling. She was very grateful for what she had. She was very thankful for the visiting of her family. And you grandchildren and great-grandchildren had the privilege of living up here all your life. I hope you'll remember the blessing it was to be close to your grandma, to enjoy her, to where you could go visit her daily. My kids, they got to see her quite a little bit, but nothing like you, but the blessings of that are, are great. I have the same blessings, all my children live around me and I get to see usually one or two of them every day and I know Lorene loved to see you kids. She loved the care and the and all that you gave to her. Lorene appreciated life. She loved her family. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, Kent, Brother Meyerhofer. 
like to thank all of those who have participated in the program in this uh, sweet and nice memorial of Sister Lorraine Webb. By way of housekeeping, um, when we proceed to the, to the cemetery, the roads are narrow and kind of small, so if you can, carpool up and uh, ride up there. I'll be up there to help direct the traffic. And uh, there's one way in and one way out. I'll just uh, have you loop around there. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll take care of uh, the graveside um, ceremony there. The grave will be dedicated by Brother Waylon Thompson. And then afterwards, there's a uh, the Relief Society of Lake Town has prepared a meal for the family and friends of Lorene Webb. We invite you to, uh, when you've concluded the service up at the cemetery, to come back down and uh, enjoy the meal that's been prepared by uh, our, our Leaf Society sisters, who we are so grateful for. Lorene was a good friend and neighbor. She's a fine friend and neighbor. I know it's been mentioned that you equate her with driving a stock truck, driving a school bus, but as Brother Meyerhofer revealed, I will always remember her for driving a white Prius around town. On weekends when I'd be out and about mowing my lawn or doing something outside, she would pass by and you'd wave. 20 minutes later, she'd pass by and you'd wave. 40 minutes later, she'd pass by and you'd wave. There were some mornings she, she would pass by four or five times. She was on patrol. I kind of wish that our Rich County law enforcement would have made her an honorary deputy in that white Prius. I think that that would have been appropriate. She was on parade, she was parading, she was checking things out, she was keeping track of the town. She didn't go north of the post office or the old rock store, the Lake Town, now the Lake Town Lodge, but she knew these, these roads better than, well, better than I'll ever know them. I always waved to her, she always waved friendly out back to me. I don't think she really knew who I was. She probably knew my wife, but she didn't know me. There was one time I was walking back from the cemetery and she was passing by and I didn't wave this time. She waved, but this time I gave her one of these. I stuck out my thumb, hitchhiker fashion. And she did slow down a little bit and thought about it for a little bit. And I thought it would be interesting to ride around with her in that Prius, see what she sees. But she knew better. She knew that I was a scoundrel and a scalawag and a ne'er-do-well. So she did slow down. And I think the thought did cross her mind, pick me up and give me a ride to wherever I needed to be. But she was right in keeping going. Anyway, we love Lorene Webb for her kindness, her generosity, the type of person she was, her interests, her talents. And I'm happy to learn from you about the family and her dear Delford, who she's reunited with. I'll direct my remarks uh, further to uh, a picture that hangs in our Relief Society. It was a favorite picture of my mother-in-law, who's no longer with us either. The picture is of a sculpture, uh, a statues, sculptures at the the left side of the picture at the beginning of it a sculpture or a statue of a dear sweet lady kind of old kind of bent over a little bit crippled somebody who's gone through some trials in life she has a cane you can tell it she's uh, she's aged she's stepping through an archway which depicts the veil uh, leaving this world and as she's stepping through there, she's changed. She's young again. She's beautiful. She's received into the arms of her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, 
who receives her with open arms. She's joyous and, and happy. Now, Lorraine has had family that's passed on before, a couple brothers, a couple sisters, her parents, and her dear Delford. That was a joyous reunion on the other side for her as she's joined again with those dear family and friends. She's lived a wonderful and a splendid and a full life. In heaven, I suspect that there's a Prius somewhere for her to drive. I like to think about that. I am so very grateful for knowing what I do know about Sister Lorene Webb. I'm just grateful for her family and thankful for you all here. I'll close with this remark if my phone will behave and I can get back into the Bible. This is in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, in the closing chapters. John the Revelator, he's telling us the way it will be. And this is how it will be in the coming days, in the coming years. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Brothers and sisters, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has made this possible. He came to earth for each of us. He came to earth to overcome the effects of physical death and sin so that we can return once again to a loving home with a loving family. We have this available for all of us. It is a free gift. As Elder Jeffrey R. Holland said, all we have to do is decide which team we're going to be on and suit up for that team. The game has already been won. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he makes this possible for all of us. And there is no distance, no thing that we could do that would remove us so far away from this that it couldn't have effect for all of us. It's available for all of us. The atonement is real. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he was resurrected. There are no more tears. There's no more crying. There is no more death. Our Lord and Savior makes this possible. Now then, Lorraine and Delford were married in the temple, and their family are covenant members. They've had their, these covenants in their family. The sealing power is bestowed upon each of you through the temple covenants. And you are hers, and she is yours, and that will never change. And you will see her again. The gospel is true. I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
our Father in heaven, as we bow our heads at the close of this service, we are so grateful that we have been able to be here today. We're grateful for the thoughts and the memories that have been shared. And we pray that those who have been here today have been comforted and uplifted. We're grateful for Grandma Lorene, for the life that she lived and the example that she set for us. Grateful for the love and the kindness that she showed to each one of us. We are grateful for the knowledge that we have that she has been reunited with loved ones who have been waiting for her and that we will someday be able to see her again. We pray that that will help us to continue her legacy, to treat those around us with love and kindness, and that we may live lives that would make her proud. We're grateful for the many blessings that we enjoy, and we pray that that will continue to bless and watch over us. Please bless those who have traveled, that they may travel safely. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.